There are very few things more despised in the world of middle school math than fractions. In this video, we're going to attempt to at least make part of it a little easier to understand. Hi, this is Todd with Land of Math. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. We'll give you some little tips and tricks, a bunch of different examples, um, and just do a little modeling to help you kind of make sense of all that. All that's coming up next on the Land of Math. Multiplying fractions is relatively an easy thing to do. So here's an example of 2 thirds times 2 sevenths. And the first step is just multiply the two numerators. So 2 times 2 is 4. Next, we multiply the two denominators. So 3 times 7 is going to be 21. And that's pretty much it. So you just multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and that's going to be your answer. Now, here's a couple more examples. Say we have 5 sevenths times 4 sevenths. Again, same thing. 5 times 4 is 20. 7 times 7, 49. Another example, 7 eighths times 3, um, three elevenths. And again, numerators we multiply, which is 21. Multiply the denominators, we get 88. And that's our answer. Now, one of the things that comes up, though, that we have to do a lot is simplifying the fractions. So here we have like three different problems, which we've multiplied and we've got the answers. But each of these can be simplified. And so we're looking for a number that we can divide in both. So the first one we can divide by 3. I'm sorry, divide by 2. And we get 3 twentieths. The next one we can divide by 2 again because they're both even numbers. So we're going to end up with 5 twenty-sevenths. The next one, 35 sixtieths, we can actually divide this one by 5. Anytime you see a number that ends in 5 and 0, we can always divide by 5. And so we end up getting 7 twelfths. Now, Here's some tips to, sell, uh, to uh, simplify fractions. Any number that's even, we can always divide by 2. And so that kind of makes it easy. Even if it's not the best number to um, divide by, it's always a good, no good way to like simplify or get some numbers a little bit smaller. So you can see here the 4, uh, four twentieths became 2 tenths, and we divide by 2 again to get 1 fifth. 18 20 seconds, we divide by 2, we get 9 elevenths. Now, let's say you can't divide by 2 because one or both the numbers are odd. That's okay, what, but what that also means is any number that is even can't divide into these either. So you kind of eliminate half your numbers. Anytime you see a number that um, ends in a 0, we know that we can always divide that by 10. Sometimes we actually could divide by 20 or 30 or more, but at least we know we can divide by 10. If you see a numbers that, like fractions with numerators and denominators, are both ending in 5 or 0, you know 5 can go into both of those. And so you've seen some examples here of that. Now, this is kind of a little more unusual one. If you add up the two digits, if it's a number that's divisible by 3, then 3 would actually divide that whole number. So, for example, 12 is 1 plus 2 is 3, and we know 3 can be divided by 3. 15 is 1 plus 5, and we can divide 6 by 3. 18 adds up to 9. 21 adds up to 3. We can divide those by 3. And you can see the other two examples down below here. So when we actually get the fractions, we can divide both the top and the bottom by 3. And so this is kind of a, a neat little way, kind of an unusual way to kind of, um, if you're looking for a way to try to simplify some fractions, I always look for these different ones right here. So I look for even numbers. I look for things in 0, things in 0 and 5 and I think you can add up to three. And that covers a huge amount. Before we start multiplying mixed numbers, it's important to understand how we can write mixed numbers as an improper fraction. So let's take two and one half. We can actually think of this as the fraction two over two plus a fraction two over two plus a fraction one half. Each of the two over twos equal one whole. So we're using two as our denominator because that's what our denominator is with the one half. And you see it equals five over two. We do the same thing for 5 and 3 fourths. Five times we're going to write the fraction 4 fourths. Each one of those represents one whole. And then we have the fraction 3 fourths. When we add all those up, we're going to end up with 23 fourths. Now, that's not always the quickest and most efficient way of doing it. So what a lot of people will do is this. We'll take our whole number times the denominator. So 2 times 2 equals 4. And then we add that to whatever's in the numerator, in this case, 1. So 4 plus 1 is going to equal 5. 
So we can say 5 over 2, and we could do it that way. Now, let's look at the fraction 5 and 2 thirds. 5 times 3 is 15. We'll take that 15, we're going to add it to the 2. That's going to give us 17, and we'll just keep our fraction 3, or I'm sorry, denominator 3, and so we have 17 thirds. Now, writing fractions as mixed numbers. So a lot of times we have improper fractions, we need to write them as a mixed number. All fractions are division problems. So we take our numerator divided by our denominator. So here you can see two goes into five two times. We have the remainder of one, so we put it up in the numerator spot and we keep the two as our denominator. Now, multiplying mixed numbers. So what we wanna do is we wanna write these as improper fractions. So the one and one half becomes three over two. Two and a half is five over two. We multiply straight across and we get 15 fourths. We divide 15 by four, and when we do that, we get three, and we have a remainder of three. That's our numerator, we keep the four, so our answer is three and three-fourths. So in this next problem, we have five and two-thirds times two and two-fifths. First of all, let's write these as improper. So this will become 17 thirds. The two and two-fifths is gonna become 12 fifths. Once we get that, we can go ahead and multiply straight across. Now, 12 times 17 is 204, three times five is 15. So now we have this division problem. How many times does 15 go into 204? It was 13. We had the remainder of nine, so we put that in the numerator spot, and then 15 is our denominator, then we simplified it down. Here's another example. We make the three and two thirds 11 thirds, two and one fifth becomes 11 fifths. We will play across, so 121 over 15. We then divide it, 15 is gonna go into 121 eight times. We have a remainder of one, so 1 15th. Now, one of the things you can do to make problems a little bit easier is something called cross simplification. So when you're getting ready to multiply, you can look diagonally. And if there's a number that will go into both of those, you can simplify it down. So in this case, with the three and the 12, three will go into both of them. So you can simplify this and say three divided by three is one, 12 divided by three is four. So when we rewrite this, it's gonna be a lot easier. It's gonna be 68 over five instead of 204 over 15. So here's another example. So we take our two and two thirds and our three and one tenth and we write them as improper. You can see diagonally that the number two will go into both 10 and two, I'm sorry, the 10 and the eight. And so when we multiply across now, it's a little bit easier to do. So the answer here was eight and four fifteenths, which you see I forgot to write down. So here's three quick problems. We're looking for ways we can simplify. Three went into both those, and 17 actually went into both those numbers. This becomes a lot easier. Eight thirds is a lot easier than dealing with some larger number like 17 times 24. Again, we can simplify here diagonally. So three went into both those. Nothing goes into two and seven, two and 11 other than one, multiply across. And this one, the two goes into both eight and 10. Nothing goes into three and 31. We just multiply straight across. And when we do that, we're gonna find out how many times does 15 go into 124, which is eight. And we look at our remainder, which is four, so it's four fifteenths. Now, there's some alternative ways to multiply in fractions. We've kind of showed you how to write it as improper. But a couple of ways might be this. Some people will use what they call like a sample space. And they'll basically make a box. So if you notice the one and one half, I put one on the left side, one half on the right. The two and one half I have going down the side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two times one is two, two times a half is one, one half times one is one half, and one half times one half is one fourth. You add all those up and you get your answer. So here's another one where we're using two and two thirds and three and one tenth. So this is another way of doing it. Now, I don't personally like doing it this way myself, but it is a way of effectively doing it if you'd like to. And so you can see you're taking that three times the uh, two thirds, you get six thirds or two, one tenth times two is two tenths or one fifth. And then the one tenth times two thirds is two thirtieths or one fifteenth. And then we add these up. And so the top two are kind of easy because that's eight. And then if we add the bottom ones, it ends up eight thirtieths. So eight and eight thirtieths. And that was simplified down to eight and four fifteenths. Now, the other one is kind of like using the FOIL method. So this is the first outside, inside, and last. So again, let's look at that one and one half times two and a half. 
So we'll multiply the first numbers. So basically it's whole number times whole number, which is two. We're gonna go one times one half. So this is the outside numbers, you go one half. Now we're gonna do the inside numbers, which is the one half and the two, which gives us the one. And then finally, we're gonna do the last numbers. So it's gonna be one half times one half is one fourth. And so when we add all those up, the two and the one, the one half and the one fourth, we're gonna end up with our answer of three, I'm sorry, three and three fourths. You see there's the whole numbers three. We had our fractions together as three fourths. So three and three fourths, okay? One more example of this. So two times three is gonna be six. That was the first. We'll do outside numbers, so two times one tenth. Then when we do that, that's gonna be two tenths or one fifth. We'll do the inside, two thirds times three. That's gonna end up six thirds, or we just call it two. And then finally last, so two thirds times one tenth. And that's gonna be two thirtieths or one fifteenth. And then all we have to do then is just add them all up again, just like we did earlier. So the two and this, the six, we put those two together, that's going to end up equaling eight. You can see we're right now one fifth and the one fifteenth. So there's the eight. One fifth plus one fifteenth is going to be four fifteenths. And so you're looking at eight and four fifteenths.